From the complete Grimm's fairy tales, this is The Three Sneak Leaves. There was once upon a time a poor man who could no longer support his only son. Then said the son, Dear father, things would go so badly with us that I'm a burden to you. I'd rather go away and see how I can earn my bread. So the father gave him his blessing and with great sorrow took leave of him. At this time, the king of a mighty empire was at war and the youth took service with him and went out to fight. And when he came back before his enemy, there was a battle and great danger and it rained shot until all his comrades on all his sides fell. And when the leader was also killed, that left, there was only one left to take the fight. And the youth stepped forth and spoke boldly and cried, we will not let our fatherland be ruined. And then others followed him and he pressed on and conquered the enemy. When the king heard that he owed victory to him alone, he raised him above all others and gave him great treasure and made him the first in the kingdom. The king had a daughter who was also very beautiful, but she was a very strange. She made a vow to take no one as her lord and husband who did not pr promise himself to be buried alive with her if she were to die first. If he loves me with all his heart, said she, of what use will life be to him afterwards? And on her side, she would do the same. If he was to die first, she would go to the grave with him. The strange oath had up to this time frightened away all her all wooers, but the youth became so charmed with her beauty that he cared for nothing, but asked her father for her. But do you know what you must promise the king? I must be buried with her, he replied, if I outlive her. But my love is so great that I did not mind the danger. Then the king consented and the wedding was solemnized with great splendor. They lived on for many for a while, many happy years and contented with each other. And it befell the young queen was attacked by a severe illness and no physician could save her. As she lay there dead, the young king remembered that he was obliged to his promise and was horrified at having to lie down alive at all the gates and it was not possible to avoid his fate. As the day came when the corpse was to be buried, he was taken down into the royal vault and the door was shut and bolted. Near the coffin stood a table on which there were four candles, four loaves of bread, four bottles of wine, and with this provision came to an end, he would die of hunger. And now he sat there full of pain and grief and ate every day a little piece of bread and drank only a mouthful of wine, and nevertheless saw death daily drawing nearer. Whilst he thus gazed before him, he saw a snake creeping out from the corner of the vault and approached the dead body. And as he thought it came to gnaw it, he drew his sword and said, As long as I live, you shall not touch her. And he hewed the snake in three pieces. After a time, the se a second snake crept out of the hole. And when it came and saw the other lying dead and cut into pieces, it went back and soon came again with three leaves in its mouth. Then it took three pieces of the snake and laid them together as they fitted and placed one of the leaves at each wound. Immediately the severed parts joined themselves together and the snake moved and became alive again. And both of them hastened away together. The leaves were lying on the ground and the desire came into his mind of this unhappy man who had been watching all this to know if the wounds, if the wondrous power of the leaves which had brought the snake back to life again could not likewise be of service to a human being. So he picked up the leaves and laid one of them on the mouth of his dead wife and the two others on her eyes. And he hardly had done this when the blood stirred in her veins and rose into her pale face and colored it again. Then she drew breath and opened her eyes and said, Oh God, where am I? You are with me, dear wife, he answered and told her how everything had happened and how he had brought her back to life. Then he gave her some wine and bread. And when she regained her strength, he raised her up and they went to the door and knocked and called so loudly that the sentries heard it and told the king. The king came down himself and opened the door. And when he found both strong and well, he rejoiced with them. And now that all their sorrow was over, the young king, however, took the three snake leaves with him and gave them to a servant and said, keep them for me carefully and carry them with you constantly. Who knows in what trouble they may be yet. We may be in yet and these could be of service to us. But the change had taken place in his wife, and after she had been restored to life, it seemed as if all love for her husband had gone out of her heart. After some time, he wanted to make a voyage over the sea to visit his old father, and they had gone on board a ship, and she forgot the great love and fidelity which he had shown her, and which by means of rescuing her from death, and conceived a wicked inclination for the skipper. And once when the young king lay there asleep, she called in the skipper and seized the sleeper by the head, and the skipper took him by the feet and thus threw him down into the sea. 
When the shameful deed was done, she said, Now let us return home and say that he died on the way. I will extol and praise you so that to my father that you will he will marry me to you and make make you the heir to the crown. But the faithful servant who had seen all that it did had uh, and unseen by them had unfastened a little boat from the ship and got into it and sailed after his master and let the traders go on their way. He fished up the dead body and helped the three snake leaves which he had carried with, about with him and laid them on the eyes and mouth and he fortunately brought the young king back to life. They both rode with all their strength day and night and the little boat sailed so swiftly that they reached the old king before the others. He was astonished to see them come home alone and asked what had happened to them. When he learned the wickedness of his daughter, he said, I cannot believe that she has behaved so ill, but the truth will come to light. And he bade both of them to go into a secret chamber and keep themselves hidden from everyone. Soon afterwards, a great ship came sailing in and the godless woman appeared before her father with a troubled countenance. And he said, why do you come back alone? Where is your husband? Oh, dear father, she replied, I come home again in great grief during... During the voyage, my husband became suddenly ill and died. And if it were not for the good skipper who had not given me this help, it would have all gone ill with me. He is, he was present at his death, and I can tell you all. The king said, I will make the dead alive again and open the chamber and bade the two to come out. When the woman saw her husband, she was thunderstruck and fell on her knees and begged for mercy. And the king said, there is no mercy. He was ready to die with you and restored you again to life, and you murdered him in his sleep and shall receive the receive the reward that you deserve then she was placed with her accomplice in a ship and which had been pierced with holes and went out to sea and they soon sank amid the waves